Module 1, Objective 8, identify the components of an enzymatic reaction and be able to classify reaction types. Chemical reaction involves either the formation of new bonds or the breaking of existing bonds. During chemical reactions, we talk in terms of reactants, reactants, yields, yielding, ultimately products. So reactants are the materials going into the reaction while products are the materials coming out. Ultimately, if you consider all the reactions that occur in the human body, we refer to these as our metabolism. And metabolism can be divided into catabolic reactions or anabolic reactions where anabolic reactions lead to building. So the body builds various components, while catabolic reaction leads to the destruction or the breakdown. There are four main types of chemical reactions that we utilize in anatomy and physiology. Here they are listed. In a decomposition reaction, your reactant is AB and it yields A plus B. So you actually have a decomposition, a breaking down, a catabolic reaction, one that destroys. A good example in physiology would be a, a hydrolysis reaction if we take the time to break down the word hydrolysis. It literally means water breaking, where lysis refers to breaking. And here we actually have an example of a decomposition reaction that includes water. So AB plus water yields A hydrogen plus B hydroxide. So here in orange, we see the water molecule being broken and then <clears throat> combined with, um, with the reactants. So this is the type of hydrolysis reaction. In comparison to that, we have synthesis reactions. Synthesis reactions are anabolic, so they're anabolism. And an example of that would be A plus B yielding AB, where you're actually building or putting together different elements, different atoms or molecules and forming larger. An example of that would be a dehydration synthesis. As dehydration suggests, it involves water. And here we have water colored in orange within the reactants and that would yield your products. Your product here is AB plus water, so you're, you're building water. So this is a synthesis reaction, an anabolic reaction, one that builds. An exchange reaction involves decomposition followed by synthesis. So first we decompose these components. So AB plus CD, we break them apart. We yield AD plus CB. So first we're decomposing the components and then we're synthesizing them in uh, different combinations. So that is the exchange reaction. Lastly, reversible reactions. And reversible reactions are predicated on this symbolism right here, this little double-ended arrow. And what that refers to is the fact that this reaction can either move to the right or to the left. In fact, it usually moves in both directions in an attempt to reach a state of equilibrium or one of balance. At equilibrium, the amounts of the chemicals do not change even though the reactants reactions, both the, the uh, reaction to the right and the reaction to the left, are still occurring. So reversible reactions seek equilibrium, a balance. When you add reactants or remove reactants from this system, 
we'll find that the reaction rate adjusts to reach the new equilibrium. So for instance, if we took the same reaction, A plus B, yields, and this is the same symbolism that we saw up here, AB, if I were to add more of A plus B, more of the reactants, the e equilibrium would readjust in order to balance out the reactants versus the products. So the four types of chemical reactions. Enzymes. <clears throat> in order for an, a, a reaction to occur, you have to overcome the activation energy. And the activation energy is simply defined as the amount of energy needed to get a reaction started. If we were to look at this little image or figure down here, we see we start here with the reactants and for the reactants to move to the products, you have to overcome a bit of energy. Um, energy is on the y-axis here. Progress of reaction is on the x. And as we move from reactants to products, there's a little hump of energy that has to be put into this system in order to make this reaction go. This energy is referred to as the activation energy. And here we see it in this dashed line. The amount of energy that has to be put into the system in order for this reaction to go. It's a fair amount of energy. The body often utilizes enzymes. Enzymes are catalysts. They tend to be protein that lower the activation energy of reactions without ever being destroyed. So enzymes can be used over and over again. So here, if we were to go back to this graph, and I've already marked it up some, we move from reactants to products, and we saw that this dashed line was the activation energy, but with an enzyme, we can actually lower that activation energy. We reduce the amount of energy that has to be put into the system to make this reaction go. And that is the, the benefit of enzymes. And again, enzymes are never altered. They're never destroyed in a reaction. They just are, they serve as catalysts. They serve to speed up the reaction by reducing the activation energy.